everybody, thanks for joining me today, Dr. Ross Marcogiani at Turnpa Health and Wellness Center with another great word of the week. Today's word of the week is going to be MTHFR mutation. We'll talk about what is an MTHFR mutation, how do we test for it, how does someone get this, and what we do about it. Let's dive in. So I've had a lot of patients recently ask me about MTHFR and inquiring about it. So I wanted to make sure we had a discussion with the public. So what MTHFR is, is it stands for methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. It is a SNP called a single nucleotide polymorphism. So basically it's something in our genetics that gets turned off and it creates this, this SNP which is, called, which is known as MTHFR mutation. So what methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase does is it helps to break down folic acid. So in our environment, we get folic acid, we take it in, and we then have this enzyme that's activated by a gene that helps us to break down folate or folic acid into its reduced form, methylfolate. The reason why this is so important is because in pregnancy, we can see neural, do, neural, t, neural tube defects develop due to poor methylation and low B vitamins, specifically folate in this case. We can see anemia. You can, have, you can become anemic from uh, low B vitamins. You can have hyperhomocysteinemia, which is an issue that results in multiple uh, disease states, one of being uh, showing a higher risk of stroke and cardiovascular risk. And with this, we can develop poor methylation. That's really the key, at, uh, the root of this crux, is that if we don't absorb our B vitamins, in this case specifically folate, but also some other B vitamins, another one, big one being B12, we don't methylate as appropriately. So what are some common symptoms and disorders of this? So we can see people having migraines, hormonal issues, irritable bowel syndrome, autoimmune diseases, chronic fatigue, mood disorders, depression, cardiovascular disease. We also see a very high correlation in MTF, MTHFR mutation with children on the, uh, the spectrum. So children with autism or are on the autistic uh, spectrum have poor methylation or have this mutation. Some other symptoms here, this is a really cool study I thought it would be interesting to share. So basically they took an agouti mouse and they fed it uh, BPA, okay? They fed it a chemical that disrupts its ability to methylate. Then they fed a mouse that um, did not interfere with methylation that actually improved methylation pathways, such as folic or, or reduced folate, right? It gave it some B vitamins and some other things such as betaine and choline. Betaine is really important for stomach acid. We're going to talk about in a second why that's so important. But they gave it that helped potentiate its methylation. The mouse that that was given the bisphenol A, became discolored, diseased, overweight, started developing cancer. The mouse on the viewing right, which was unmethylated, be developed in a normal, healthy mouse. Also, with, the, with methylation that we've talked about here, uh, we mentioned B12 being important with methylation. So we see here, and we talked about quick, briefly about betaine and, and stomach acid. So we can see here that if we're not methylating per, appropriately and we're, having, uh, we're not having enough stomach acid, we're not going to absorb our B vitamins as effectively. So we won't absorb folate as effectively. We also won't absorb B12 as effectively. And a study actually done, was done and found that uh, if B12 was in the bottom tertile, so you weren't absorbing your B vitamins effectively, it actually increased the rate of brain volume loss. So something really you know, 
scary here, scary here and something to be aware of, right? How important methylation is to brain function, right? And how important stomach acid is. So what are some testing that we can do for this MTHFR gene? Remember, that's for folate. This looks at our ability to digest folate. Um, we can do MTHFR genetic testing. So we can test for your C677T and A1298C. These are two genetic tests that we can look. In, in order to have this MTHFR mutation, by definition, you need to carry both of these genes. But some people can carry one. And even if you're just carrying one, for me, that's enough to be cautious and try to support that individual's ability to methylate uh, as much as possible. We can look at their homocysteine, right? Because we talked about we can have uh, hyperhomocysteinemia, high ho homocysteine levels. We can look at your folate levels, and we want to make sure we're checking those other B vitamins, right? B1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 12, right? This is important to check. What do we do here? So we want to make sure we're giving healthy nutrition, a paleo template, again, that's high in antioxidant, rich, colorful vegetables and some fruit, a little bit of good protein, uh, some good healthy fats, right? That's to break it down in a nutshell, avoiding gluten, dairy, sugar, corn, soy. Uh, we want to make sure we have healthy stomach acid. So remember that stomach acid helps the absorption of B vitamins and helps break down uh, these um, breaks down the, the folic acid or these other larger particles into its methylated form, right? So we want to make sure we have good stomach acid. If we're taking PPIs or proton pump inhibitors that blocks the absorption of these essential vitamins, um, such as Nexium or Prilosec, these are, these are things that would block your stomach acid. We want to make sure we're consuming methyl, methylated folate, right? So most physicians will say, oh, that's just simple. Just take a methylated form. There, you know, that, that is the, the quick fix to it. There are some other things we can do, again, as we're discussing here. But we want to make sure we're not consuming just regular folic acid. If you have an MTHFR SNP, we want to make sure it's a methylated form. Check all of your supplements like I talked about for folic acid. If you have that SNP, you do not want to be absorbing folic acid. It will make things worse. I want to make sure we have good vitamin D, good magnesium, good B12. These are things that will help to improve methylation. I want to make sure the body can detox appropriately. Again, if we're improving detoxification, that means methylation is working effectively. Reduce alcohol consumption, which can in influence methylation. We want to make sure we're managing stress. Um, I like uh, certain apps. You can use a, a WHOOP that measures heart rate variability, gives you good influence to your amount of stress levels and can give you some actual feedback. Um, another thing on here is uh, SAMe s -adenyl, adenosyl meth uh, methionine uh, is helpful to uh, push along the methylation process or speed up or improve the methylation process. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you're concerned about your uh, having MTHFR mutation, please don't hesitate to reach out to the office. If you know someone that can benefit from this, please don't hesitate to share this video with them. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.